ट्रांसमिशन लाइन बेसिक ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इक्वेशन आई एम कंसिडरिंग जनरल स्ट्रक्चर पैरल वायर लाइन हैविंग सम डिस्टेंस हैविंग सम लेंथ एल सपोज एट ए पर्टिकुलर लेंथ फ्रॉम सेंडिंग एंड दिस इज सेंडिंग एंड दिस इज लोड एंड लोड एंड सो फ्रॉम सेंडिंग एंड एट ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ एक्स the voltage is v and the current is i then the basic transmission lines equations looks like this d square v by d x square is equal to gamma square v d square i by dx square is equal to gamma square i where v and i are voltage and current at a particular distance x from sending end if you solve if you observe these two equations these are nothing but a second order differential equations so if you solve these second order differential equations you can get v and i that is you can calculate voltage and current at any point on the transmission line by using these basic equations these are called basic equations of a transmission line of course uh, we are going for gate examination point of view i am not going to derive how these equations came just i am giving the form of the equations the equations looks like this so that we will concentrate more on problems so the basic equations of a transmission line d square v by dx square is equal to gamma square v d square i by dx square is equal to gamma square i where v i and i are voltage and current at any point on the transmission line from sending end here this gamma so gamma is called propagation constant gamma is propagation constant we know that gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta where uh, alpha is alpha is attenuation constant alpha is attenuation constant what is the unit of alpha nepers per meter or decibels per meter what are the unit of beta beta is a what is beta beta is a phase constant beta is a phase constant beta is a phase constant what is the unit radian per meter the unit of a beta is generally even though we call gamma as a propagation constant it has units per meter or that is we can say per meter the unit generally in terms of length we can measure the unit of a propagation constant of course we are calling here it as constant that means that doesn't mean that uh, it, it, it doesn't have any unit okay similarly attenuation constant phase constant that doesn't mean it it doesn't have any unit it is a constant value no it has some unit alpha and beta so in generally propagation constant is equal to alpha plus j beta attenuation constant alpha as well as phase constant beta how we can uh, relate uh, this gamma in terms of uh, basic parameters or primary constants is like this gamma is equal to 
square root of z into y. Gamma is equal to square root of z into y. We know that z is series impedance. Z is equal to R plus J omega L. Y is equal to G plus J omega C. Therefore, gamma is equal to square root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. So, this is important thing you have to keep in mind. The propagation constant in terms of primary constants of a transmission line. Gamma is equal to square root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. Another important parameter is characteristic impedance. Characteristic impedance. It's indicated by Z0. Characteristic impedance. This is one of the important parameter of a transmission line. How we can define this characteristic impedance is the characteristic impedance Z0 of a line is the is the ratio of ratio of voltage to voltage to current ratio of voltage to current at any point on the line at any point on the line actually there are plenty of definitions for this characteristic impedance one of the important one is the characteristic impedance z naught of a line is the ratio of voltage to current at any point on the line this z naught characteristic impedance in terms of primary constants is given by square root of z by y where z is series impedance y is shunt admittance we know it very well of course i am not going for the derivations of these things which will take a lot of time uh, the thing is uh, here we have to remember the formulas to do uh, to solve the problems so keep in mind uh, these things so the characteristic impedance is I can write R plus J omega L by G plus J omega C. So I can define the characteristic impedance of a transmission line in terms of primary constants of a line. So here the two important one is one is propagation constant gamma and one is characteristic impedance of a line. Now we will see for a lossless line lossless line so a line is said to be lossless then what is the conditions a for a lossless line r is equal to g is equal to zero Okay, so lossless line means the conductors are perfect. Conductors are perfect. That is a sigma value. Conductivity value is infinite. Okay. Therefore, for a lossless line, R is equal to G is equal to 0. We know this very well. Now, what is, happens to propagation constant? Gamma. Gamma. Gamma is equal to, we know, R plus J omega L into G plus j omega c we know it very well now put r is equal to 0 g is equal to 0 in this equation then what happens gamma gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta is equal to square root of r 0 means j omega l into j omega c 
so it is nothing but square root of j square omega square lc so i can take j omega out so j omega because j omega whole square so j omega square root of lc that is nothing but alpha plus j beta if you understand if you compare from right hand side to left hand side what you can get alpha is equal to 0 whereas beta is equal to omega root lc that is for a lossless line attenuation constant is equal to 0 attenuation constant is equal to 0 that is true then only we can say that it is a lossless whereas phase constant exists phase constant exists means wave is propagating ok so for a lossless line alpha is equal to 0 beta is equal to omega into root lc so this is one of the important point you have to keep in mind generally how we can relate beta what is beta beta is equal to phase constant is equal to 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda for a wave what is the phase velocity phase velocity vp is equal to omega by beta so if you substitute here the phase velocity is 1 by root lc phase velocity is root 1 by root lc so this is another kind of relations we know it very well similarly for a lossless line what is characteristic impedance z0 z0 is equal to square root of r plus j omega l by g plus j omega c so that is equal to substitute r is equal to 0 g is equal to 0 then what happens this is nothing but j omega l by j omega c j omega j omega cancels out so the remaining thing is square root of l by c so z naught is equal to square root of l by c how we can uh, suppose z naught this is a characteristic impedance so that is uh, this has some uh, real part plus some imaginary part since uh, here characteristic impedance is a complex value z naught has some real part as well as some imaginary part for a lossless line if you observe we have only l by c only real part is there therefore what is the unit of this so since it is a real so some resistance plus some complex value so the unit of this is ohms so z naught is equal to root l by c the unit is ohms so pure real value pure real value the characteristic difference is purely real for a lossless line so the in one of the examination the question is what is the unit of what is the unit of root l by c this is the question so what is the answer simply the unit of root l by c is obviously ohms so well, generally we like this type of questions based on concept we will get in the examination now we will discuss distortionless line or distortionless transmission line generally a signal so a signal consists of uh, a band of frequencies a band of frequencies that is a signal a signal is having different amplitudes different amplitudes and with different frequencies different frequencies generally a signal is a combination of number of signals a complex signal or uh, with the help of suppose Fourier series we can represent a signal summation of sines and cosines that is uh, 
different amplitudes and the different frequencies. Now what happens in general is, if this signal is a transmitting on a transmission line, the amplitudes are attenuated differently. Suppose, F having some amplitude A, 2F frequency having some amplitude 2A. So, while transmitting what happens, these amplitudes are attenuated differently. Generally in a loss, loss, uh, lossy line. Because in a lossy line, attenuation constant is alpha, is frequency dependent, is frequency dependent. For a lossless line, alpha is equal to zero. We know it. So, that's why in generally a distortionless line is because this is a distortion property because in a generally in a lossless line what happens different amplitudes are attenuated differently so some distortion exists at the output side so how we can define a distortionless line is a distortionless line is a line a distortionless line is a line a distortionless line is a line in which in which the attenuation constant the attenuation constant in which the attenuation constant alpha is frequency independent alpha is frequency independent that is all band of frequencies attenuated to a same value at the output side so, there is no distortion at all. So, a distortionless line is a line in which the attenuation constant alpha is frequency independent and phase constant. Phase constant beta is beta is linearly dependent on frequency. Linearly dependent on frequency. Beta is linearly dependent on frequency. If this condition satisfies, then we can say that the line is a distortionless line. Actually, the condition the condition for a distortionless line is Lg is equal to Rc. Lg is equal to Rc. If this property holds good, then we can say that uh, the line has a distortion line. Very very important, asked several times in the examination. We can replace it uh, also R by L is equal to G by C. But it is uh, convenient to remember like this. Lg is equal to Rc. Okay. This is a condition, if this condition holds good, then we can say that the line has a distortionless line. Now we will see what is the propagation constant and what is characteristic impedance for a distortionless line. I know that gamma is equal to square root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. This is for general formula. Now what I am doing is, take R common from the first first one and G common from the second one. So, this becomes, this is square root of, I am taking R common here, 1 plus J omega L by R, G common 1 plus J omega C by G. Now, this is equal to square root of R into G, R G into